Hi everyone and welcome back to Bree in the Garden. Today it's about six to seven weeks out from last frost. I'm using Mother's Day, May 10th as a last frost date. So we are going to be getting some seeds started, including sweet pea, red seed poppy, gumfrina, Chinese forget-me-not, my dahlia seeds, as well as my tomato seeds. First up is the red seed poppy. Um, I actually grew this poppy last year for the first time and learned a lot and was able to save the seeds from, from that. So I have a jar full of saved seeds from last year. And then somebody um, from one of my local gardening Facebook groups sent me this other type of poppy. She said she thinks it's like a pink peony type. Um, so these are what we'll be getting started today. Just another note on the poppy, other poppy types I'm starting this year is the Iceland poppies. I have already started these. Actually, let me go grab them and show you those. Here are my little um, Iceland poppy babies. They are doing well. They're very slow growers, which is why I started this type of poppy a while ago. Um, and you can see they're very small, but that is to be expected. The other type of poppy I'll be growing this year is the California poppy, and I'll be starting this one in about one or two weeks. Well, a lot of people say that um, bread seed poppies do best when they're direct sown, but I actually tried that last year and didn't have any luck. I don't know why none of my direct sown seeds came up in my garden. I actually started transplants as well last year, and those did do pretty well in the garden. So this year I have already started a winter sowing, um, and those are sprouted and doing very well and um, I'm also gonna be doing transplants today. So I'll be doing both types of the red seed poppy. And um, because we're, like I said, we're about six to seven weeks out, um, it's recommended that transplants of red seed poppy are started five to eight weeks before last frost. Um, I will be sowing them a quarter of an inch deep in the cells and the expected germination on these is about seven days, but like always, um, I find my germination rates to be a little bit higher than the expected germination rates. So I am taking notes on all of my germination times this year so that I'll have that information for the future. Um, there's no need to pinch these. And then you definitely wanna harden these off for about five days before you transplant them out. And you can transplant them out when they have about three sets of true leaves. So they can be very small. And I plan on transplanting um, my transplants out about three weeks before the last frost. And I also may do a second succession of um, these starting some indoors in about three to four weeks so that I can then put those transplants outdoors um, a little bit later. Um, when these go into the garden, they'll be spaced about six inches apart and you can expect them to get 24 to 36 inches high. And for harvesting these, although they have a very short base life of only about two to three days, if you do want to harvest them as a cut flower, as opposed to just enjoying um, their beauty out in the garden, you should do that when they're about halfway open, um, just when the bud's about to break. And you can sear them with a flame or dip them in boiling water for about seven to 10 seconds. And that will help um, give them a little bit of a longer base life. So there's the two types of poppies. Next up is gumfrina. So um, gumfrina take about 70 to 90 days to maturity. And you wanna start the transplants indoors about six to eight weeks before your last frost, which is why I'm starting them today. And um, you also want to pre-soak your seeds for about 24 to 48 hours before planting. Um, I have had these seeds soaking for longer than that, so I hope that doesn't um, cause a problem. Time just got away from me. Um, and then you'll want to plant them about an eighth to a quarter of an inch deep. Um, you can expect about five to 14 days to germination, and, and the germination um, for that is about 70 to 78 degrees, so these will most definitely be going on the heat mat. Um, they don't require a, print, a pinch because they are naturally branching and you want to harden and transplant these out after the danger of frost. They are a tender annual, so they have no frost tolerance, so you definitely don't want to start them too early. Um, 
and you don't want to put them out into the garden too early. And you can space these in the garden a little closer together at around six to eight inches, or you can space them a little farther apart around 12 to 18 inches um, to give them room to spread out. I plan on putting them a little farther apart so that they can grow into their space. And you harvest these at peak. They make great dried flowers as well. And they have a great vase life of about seven to 14 days. And the more you cut these, the more that they will produce blooms for you. So I'm really excited about these this year. Let's go ahead and get them started. Alright, so next up is Chinese forget-me-not. Um, these are different than your regular forget-me-nots, so don't get the two confused. Um, these are going to be about 70 days to maturity, and you want to start these indoors for transplants about six to eight weeks before the last frost. Um, they do need darkness to germinate, so you'll want to start um, plant them about a half inch deep in their cells. Um, expected germination is about 5 to 14 days at 70 to 80 degrees, so these will definitely go on the heat mat as well. Um, and yeah, you want to grow them to, until they have a couple of true leaves and then get them into the ground because they do better in cooler conditions. Um, I'm starting mine today, um, around 6 to 7 weeks before last frost, and I will put them in the ground a little bit before last frost, but right around then. Um, they'll be spaced 6 to 12 inches in the garden, and I'm expecting them to get 14 to 16 inches tall. Um, for our harvesting, the plan is to um, first harvest the very large um, flowering stem deep at the base, so then that will um, encourage the plant to send out more side shoots um, for a couple more weeks of harvesting. So you want to harvest them just as the blooms open. And if you do keep these harvested and um, don't let the flowers go to seed, you can expect six weeks of blooms off of these. So I'm interested to see if I can accomplish that. Um, I'm not sure about the base life on these, but these are a hardy annual. And um, one of the great things I've heard about them is that you can expect blooms from seed with these in just about six weeks. Um, so we'll see what happens for me. All right, next up are dahlia seeds. Last year I did grow some dahlias from tubers, um, but this year I'm gonna be doing those tubers as well. I'll be potting them up and giving them a start indoors in a couple of weeks, but I'm gonna start the dahlia seeds I have now. Um, these say to expect about 100 to 120 days to maturity, and you wanna start the transplants indoors four to six weeks before last frost. Um, I'm doing it a little bit before that because some other sources and other people I've seen doing this, so that's what I'm gonna do as well. Um, and then I'm basically gonna start them just like a zinnia seed, so just bury them under there, and I think they just pop up no problem. Um, for pinching, you do wanna pinch these um, because if you, well, I do, because if you pinch the lead shoot, um, when the dahlia is just a few inches high, the dahlia will reroute its energy and start developing more side shoots. Um, if you choose not to pinch, I think you get like a more amazing like lead flower that's like very dahlia-y, um, but dahlias, I don't really care for the big, huge, fancy, ornate ones, so I'm okay with a whole lot of little, more dainty, smaller ones. Um, and then you want to harden these off and transplant them, transplant them out after the danger of frost has passed when it's warmed up a bit. They don't like cold, damp conditions, so definitely don't put them out too soon. Uh, they can go 6 to 12 inches apart. I've heard um, people spacing them closer around the 6 inch inches to um, help them support each other. So I'll probably put them around 9 inches apart in my garden. And then you, they can get 36 to 40 eight inches high and you want to harvest them when the blooms are about three quarters of the way open um, and do that either very early in the morning or late in the evening and directly into a, a bucket of water and they do have kind of a short base life of just four to five days 
So with the Dahlia seeds, um, you don't really know what you're gonna get. Um, like a Dahlia tuber, you know exactly what you're gonna get, but um, I'm okay with the surprise, actually excited about it. And if you find one that you really like, you can dig it up at the end of the season and save the tuber that it's formed to grow that again um, in subsequent years. So definitely keep them on the drier side until they have sprouts and then you can provide start watering them more. And they do need plenty of water and nutrients, so I plan on giving them a fish emulsion um, every couple of weeks and you can do that as a foliar spray or you know just in a watering can right on the dirt and definitely keep them deadheaded so that they give you the most amount of blooms. It should be really interesting this year to see how my dahlias grown from my tubers um, perform um, and how much I like them compared to these dahlias grown from seed. Um, if anything I'm just really excited to try something new this year so it should be fun. Okay, so I've got all the flowers um, planted up in their cells. I'm just kind of watering them in on the top with the spray bottle to settle the surface here. Um, I'll probably give some of them a little quick bottom watering and then we'll get them in under the grow lights on the heat mat in the other room. Oh yeah, and I gotta plant all my tomatoes um, before I do that. I'm not gonna film that because that's just pretty standard stuff, but this one's my favorite, so I'm going to do that now. So I finished planting all the tomatoes and I have everything we started today in this um, pack here on the heat mat. So we'll just watch it and see when everything starts to germinate. Um, I guess I'll give you an update on some of the other stuff we started in the last video. So those are some peppers. Looking good. Um, this is the sun ball that we started in the last flower video. This is the fever few. I had pretty bad germination here, so I actually did start a new six pack and it's in here today. So hopefully that gets better germination. Um, this is the sweet William. It's looking good. And these are my Iceland poppies. Um, my first year doing these, so mm, I think they're doing okay. I mean, Pretty small and slow growing, but I think that's to be expected. Here we've got a bunch of various herbs. And this is the stock that was started in the last flower video. Um, there's my one Lysianthus that's doing okay. I explained in a previous video how I'm not quite sure my Lysianthus are gonna make it, um, but hopefully that one big one because the rest of them are super tiny um there's more jalapeno peppers and here are more eggplants looking good so there's that and then these are the sweet peas that were started on their own little heat map so everything is all cleaned up and we're done for the night thanks for joining and i'll see you next time